So in this next section, we'll talk about the effect of different priors on our final posterior decision. So let's look at the first example, which is how can we leverage custom priors? So the procedure is the same as before, but here we are looking at the idea that we have some experience in one site that we are trying to leverage to obtain priors for another location. So let's look at this example. Here we are looking at a scenario where process equipment is being relocated from Brazil to China. And the same engineering controls are installed in the new facility in China that used to be in Brazil. And so can we use past sampling data from process operator number one in Brazil to construct a custom prior for our new process operator number one located in China? So let's start off with a uniform prior. And we have four data points, n equal to four, and the OEL is 100 parts per million, and the four data points are 13, 26, 18, and 12 parts per million. And these correspond to a likelihood function that is shown at the top right hand. There's 72.6% probability in category two, but 7.4% in category four, so above our threshold of 5% in category four. So now we say, okay, we are moving this operation to China, and it's going to be the exact same operation, the exact same facility. You just moved it to China. So we could use the experience we had in Brazil and say, okay, the prior for China is essentially the likelihood that was in Brazil. So we have a very informative prior for China, 72.4% in Category 2, and 7.4% in category four. Then we collect a few additional data points in China. And I'm not showing you the data points, but let's assume that we had two or three data points in China. So it's leading to a category two exposure with 58.8% probability in category two and 17.1% in category four. But now our posterior is a very highly confident category two exposure with 87.6% in category two and only 2.6% in category four. So what we have done is we have leveraged our experience in Brazil to arrive at a very confident posterior decision in China with very few data points measured in China. So a few comments. The prior decision chart has a greater influence on the posterior decision when the sample size is small. And if we have very large sample sizes, say n greater than 10, then the prior has less influence on the posterior. But for category four, it could still be significant and important. Consequently, the accuracy of the initial rating is a critical issue when our sample size is small. Let's look at a couple of more examples and look at the impact of prior on small and medium-sized data sets. So let's look at a data set with only two data points, 12 and 21. And on the bottom left-hand side, I'm showing you the likelihood chart corresponding to these two data points. So 57.1% in category two, but 18.5% in category four so well above our 5% in category four. But now let's say that we go ahead and collect six more samples. So now we have eight samples in our data set. So now we have a very high amount of probability in category two, 88.1% and then only 1.1% in category four. So it's a clear category two decision. What happens when we have a prior, which is shown in this graph, which is also saying it's a category two exposure and with 50% probability and less than 5% in category four. So it's a clear category two exposure. 
Now, if we have only two samples, like in our likelihood function on the left-hand side, we arrive at a posterior with 83% in category two and only 2.2% in category four. So it's a clear category two decision and the prior as well as the likelihood match in the categories. If you look on the right-hand side with eight data points, again, we have a prior that says it's category two, less than 5% in category four. Then we have a likelihood from eight data samples. And then now we have 95% in category two and a 0.1% in category four. So what is the added benefit here for eight data points compared to two data points? Well, not a whole lot because both sets of data lead us to the same posterior decision. And so in a way you could argue that, yeah, we went from 83.6% probability in category two, we have two data points and 95% in category two with eight data points, but really the added certainty did not buy us anything useful. So in a way we wasted resources by collecting six additional data points. Now let's look at the same data sets, but with different priors. So on the left-hand side now, we have 60% in category four in our prior. And so the decision probabilities in the prior and the likelihood show a mismatch and they don't agree with each other. So the posterior on the left-hand side is being driven by our prior, and it is leading us to say that we have a category four exposure, primarily because our prior has such a high percentage in category four. And we know, because we have looked at this example in the previous slide, that in fact, this is a wrong decision. The correct decision is category two, but we are driven to a wrong decision by our incorrect prior. But if we now look at the right-hand side with eight data points, the eight data points lead us in the direction of a correct decision. Now we have 53% in category two, but we are still above the threshold for category four, so we are at 8.2% in category four. So in a way, by making an incorrect prior decision, we are in a way wasting resources also. On the left-hand side, we are making an incorrect decision. And on the right-hand side, we are also making an incorrect decision because it looks like we still need to collect more samples. So the price we pay for an incorrect wrong prior is that in one case, we could basically make a wrong decision and put people in exposure controls when we don't need to, it's really a category two exposure, but we are about to make a decision as if it were category four. And on the right-hand side, we need to make possibly more than eight samples to correct for our incorrect prior. Let's look at another example. And here, again, we are gonna use the same pattern. So in the first data set, we have two data points, and in the second set, we have eight data points. So both of them lead us to a category four exposure n equal to eight data points. We have more probability in category four. In this example also, on the left-hand side, we have a prior where we are saying it's a category two exposure, although that is contradicted by what the two monitoring data are telling us that it's a category four exposure. And the same is true for n equal to eight. So in both cases, we have an incorrect decision, although the data are leading us to the right decision in both instances, because there is a significant amount of probability in category four. Now we have yet one more example of the impact of a mismatched prior. So in this example, we have only two data points, 10 and 22. And if we now look at the left-hand side, we have a prior which says it's a category two exposure with 50% probability and 5% in category four. 
the two data points lead us to a likelihood function that is shown here with a 20.8% probability in category four. And the posterior has 3.2% in category four. So we have a clear category two exposure in this case. But on the right-hand side, we are now again having an incorrect prior. We are actually underestimating exposures here. So we are saying it's a category one exposure, whereas the data are saying it's a category two, although with a very high probability in category four. But now our posterior is saying that there is 5.8% probability in category four. So even though we underestimated the exposure and our prior is saying it's category one and our likelihood has the highest probability in category two, what is happening in the posterior is that there is more probability in category four, in fact, above our threshold. And so the point of these three examples is that it's sort of sometimes it's hard to predict where the probability is going to increase if you have an incorrect prior. So in this example, even though our prior underestimated the exposure on the right-hand side, it still leads us to a posterior where we are saying it could be category four. And so we get penalized for mismatched prior and sampling data. Here are some warnings on creating priors. An incorrect prior can drive the wrong decision in some circumstances. So it's important to create a process for validating priors using sampling data from the same SEG. So in any organization, there needs to be rules on minimum number of samples per SEG and the boundaries of the universe in the parameter space for the GST and the maximum sample GSTs that can be tolerated before we move on to task-based sampling approaches. There needs to be rules on task differences and engineering controls as well that need to be implemented within any company or organization.